What's up, Easy here from Easy On Cars. Today I'm going to show you my intake manifold and how I welded it all back up. So here is the intake manifold now with the throttle body on the front side. And for your reference, um, here is the old style. So the throttle body is back here, just like every SVX uh, is normally. Obviously, there's no welding, anything done. This is just a factory intake manifold. So if you look at this, now we have the um, throttle body on this side and that was done by cutting both sides here and then rotating at 180 degrees and you can see Don from DCF really did a good job of, uh, of cleaning that up and welding those um, let me hold it in place and uh, you know so he could tack it and then just welded it up for me so my skills at aluminum welding are not quite there yet so um, I was pleased to have him do that for me and if you look at the bottom here, he even went the extra mile. Um, so I asked him to plug the old EGR, and he did that. So that turned out really good. And you can see the welds, uh, welds look really good. So he was able to fill a little bit more of a gap than I expected. So that's, uh, that's really nice. His, his welder did a really good job. Um, while I had all this apart, there was some oil and stuff in the inside, so I took that the time to kind of, you know, clean up inside of there and really make sure that it was as clean as it could be because, you know, opportunity to get in there. And uh, I also went ahead and just took a file to the places I could reach anywhere on the inside of these welds so we don't have any um, essentially just leftover slag or anything like that, which there's not really any of from the aluminum welding but you know you know what I'm saying little bits of metal you don't really want those to go in your engine but uh, as Don mentioned at least it's aluminum and not steel in this case if that does happen but we'll be sure to clean it up once again before we even put it back on the engine so that makes my old EGR port block off here unnecessary but I'll probably just leave it on there anyway so that is my intake manifold been rotated so if you are going to do this what you want to do is bolt the throttle body on once it's cut, right? And then position it based on that um, idle air control valve down here because that way you'll know exactly the clearance. And also using those spacers gives you a little bit of a little bit more room to play with. So basically just between doing those two things, right? Adding the spacers and then tacking this in a place where the idle air control valve clears the block then you're good to go let's uh let's see what it looks like sitting on the car so one more thing you're gonna have to think about if you're doing this is what do you do with your alternator um i'm going to have to fabricate a bracket for my alternator to live the um ej power steering unit that i have in here it'll just clear um, the throttle body so that's not a big deal and if you're curious to know how i have a ej power steering unit bolted on here uh, I will show you. So basically what I had done is this little tab here. I had welded on and extended out the power steering bracket here. This is the bracket that holds the power steering unit and it also holds the EJ alternator in place. And I had that welded and then I put spacers down here. You can see them uh, for that bolt and there's one more bolt underneath that I put spacers in. And the actual same thing for the alternator bracket. Let me see if I can find it here. Yep, and then here's the alternator bracket. Uh, same thing. This is a tab that was welded on. This is a tab that was welded on. And then uh, spacers in, or washers essentially, for where you bolt it on. And that worked out really well. This is not going to be working out well for me now because the alternator essentially has to move. Let's see, I can probably show you an example of why that's the case. So yeah, 
can see the alternator would live essentially right between these two brackets and that's exactly where my charge pipes are going to go so that will not work so uh, one thing I might do is scour the junkyard to find a smaller alternator and mount it over on this side where the air conditioning was and uh, that's probably what I'm going to do so those are the things you should think about when you're rotating your intake for a turbo EG setup and it might not be all the things but those are all the things that came up for my particular setup so hopefully that helps you guys out like always take it easy easy on cars